Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin. That's what we're going to be covering today. Want to do a bit of a deep dive because we want to just kind of get an up to date analysis of the market, see where we're at, what's likely to occur next so you can best plan and prepare. So if you like today's video, hit the like, subscribe and the bell notification. Help me get to a thousand subscribers. I think we're at 800 now, so we're getting close, getting close. If you don't know me by now, my name is Jagir. I'm the award winning author of the Extraordinary New Venture Capital Opportunity, How to Invest Like a Pro. I've been in the trading space around 15 years, mainly focused on currencies, but now I focus on crypto. And I was featured in this best selling book, High Probability Trading Strategies, back in 2008. So let's dive in. Now, before we dive into Bitcoin and Ethereum and Dogecoin, let's just actually have a quick look at the screen we're going to look at the four seasons of crypto just want to do a quick loop you may have seen one of my videos talking about this previously season one well i call it recovery right this is after the bull run after the bull run big recovery then the market tends to go sideways sleeping i call it sleeping like you got you got the bull run phase one is recovery right like 2018 2019 recovery 2019 2020 kind of sleeping then the market kind of wakes back up and it's normally associated with the Bitcoin halving, which happens every four years, every 2,010,000 10, blocks of or the Bitcoin blockchain, a halving event occurs. And then we have season four, which I like to call venture capital. Retail venture capital is more like a sprint, it's a bull mode. So let's have a quick look at where are we now? Because it's a bit confusing, right? We've had this amazing pullback in Bitcoin from 64000 down to around $28,000 per Bitcoin. Where are we right now? That's the big question, right? Well, let's just quickly dive back. History shows us this, right? The market, we're talking about waking back up, bull zone, boom, correction. Market's going to recovery mode, sleeping, boom, waking back up, bull mode 2017. Again, recovery, sideways, waking back up, and now we're in 2021. So if we just have a quick look at this. Back in 2014, 2015, it's like the recovery. And also 2018, 2019, recovery. Two, boom, sleeping, waking up. So now I still believe we're in this bull mode, this sprint mode, but we're in, we're in a recovery within the bull mode, right? And that's the way the markets tend to, tend to kind of map out. So it kind of moves in a nice cyclical pattern. Now, before we dive into Bitcoin, I also want to just quickly do a quick recap because we use Elliott Wave theory a lot and we want to get the odds in our favor that's what we're always looking for right Elliott wave theory and those that haven't seen my training this is just a quick recap markets typically move in a five wave sequence one two three four five with an abc correction bop 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 and then the market also tends to break down to lesser degree waves and you'll see this wave one breaks down into five waves just so you're clear as well you know the market doesn't always follow this pattern around 50 so up to 70% of the time in the crypto space, there'll be a clear evident pattern. And then the other 30 to 50% of the time, there's not a clear pattern. So when there is, we can get a stronger opinion of the market from a pattern perspective. Wave twos, wave threes, wave fours, wave five. So when we're doing the analysis, we're gonna look at Bitcoin. We're trying to see where is the market in context of this whole picture? And can we get the, the odds in our favor what's likely to occur next? So let's now jump in to Bitcoin. Right, so this is, let's just get this chart up here. This is the daily chart of Bitcoin. Now, what we, what I was, if you see my previous videos, if I just pull this up here, uh, this arrow here, you'll see this big move to the downside. Now, the wave count seems to be a one, two, three, four, and we're on this final leg down, right? So it's been a very impulsive on the downside. Now, when we're looking at that in terms of Elliott waves, it's this exact pattern, but facing downwards because it occurs on a bull market, but also a bear market. Now, initially, especially when I, if you saw my April 19th and May 3rd video, when we pretty much picked this top and we'll see in this correction, what I was anticipating was three legs, one, two, three, correction to finish around here and then continue. But look, the market is the market and the psychology of the market as it unfolds, we can only go by the data. And it seems as though it's a nice one, two, three, four, five. So now taking momentum into consideration, we, we had this momentum here, the bullet reversal, like a reversal on the momentum. And that was a good sign. However, 
Bitcoin didn't respond that well. Like, look, it only did a tiny little move to the upside. Like, it was tiny. It was like we was expecting a big power blow, you know, knockout punch to get some real buying back into the markets with the bulls come back in. But it didn't really happen. It didn't really happen. It was more corrective, which indicates that we're probably going to get a lower low than this. That's going to impact the rest of the market. That's just the way the markets are in crypto. So, because the momentum currently is more on the oversold side and we're probably going to see a bullish reversal, we're probably going to see a sideways to up next couple of days and then we're probably going to see a lower low being made maybe in this range maybe into the mid 20 thousands um so lower than this low so we just want to prepare for that you know prepare for that because it will impact the rest of the markets if that does unfold remember we're only working with probabilities we can't say for absolute certain um but we can only work with probabilities so when we're looking at bitcoin it looks like we're going to make lower lows make sense all right now let's jump into ethereum Ethereum. So let's dive straight in. So let's just look at the pattern first of all. So if you saw my last video, similar thing with Ethereum. However, the difference was it was a more clearer ABC correction. So we've got this first move down to the downside. We've got this second move up to the upside. It looks like an ABC irregular because the B normally would be a bit higher, but that's just the way it is. And then it looks like we're making this final leg down to complete a potential wave C of a wave four. If that's the case, this normally breaks down into five waves. So let's just update this. So if we just look at this a bit closer, let me get rid of this, and let's just get rid of this as well. Is the pattern is a one, two, looks like a wave three, four, but now we've made a higher high, so it'll be a four, and then a potential final leg down. However, looking at the next week, so we're going to look at the short term and the medium term. So if you're planning for this week, what's likely to happen? And then slightly after that also. So the momentum is becoming bullish, meaning you'll see that these lows marry up nicely with this momentum. When the blue line crosses the red line, the lows match up quite nicely. So we can anticipate that we're going to have a local low market by move up, sideways to up for maybe a couple of days. And then we should anticipate a low below this low being made. Uh, what range? Around here somewhere. Uh, here somewhere. Bomb. Now, again, Ethereum. That's going to be, you know, $1,500, maybe even $1,300 per Ethereum. If that occurs, it's going to, you know, panic the market a little bit because Ethereum is a powerhouse. But look, short term, anything less than a year, definitely less than six months, is more around speculation. Right? People just buying and selling based on emotion, based on short term, medium term profit and loss. So there you have it. Ethereum is looking like a nice wave A. We've got a nice clean B. And we're looking like we're making a one, two, three, four, and a final leg down of a wave five, of a C of a four. If that occurs, what do we anticipate after this is new moves to the upside, right? New moves to the upside. So again, let's just quickly do a quick recap on any other waves. We are looking, if I just do this again, blah, 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 blah. Ethereum, we're basically saying it's looking like let's get right to it we look like we completed this wave three and we're doing like a nice a b c of a wave four so when we're talking about ethereum so we're really on the same page we're talking about we look like we're doing like a nice a b c of a wave four yeah a wave a b c this is like the theory Again, 50 to 60, 70 percent of the time, these patterns will unfold in the markets. When they do, we can get valuable information to say what's likely to occur next. So what we're anticipating next is this new wave five high, which will exceed the previous all time high. That's what we're anticipating. And if that unfolds, it's going to be really positive for the entire market. There's a few things coming into play, as you're probably aware with Ethereum, the upgrades. Um, but to point that aside, just pure psychology of buying and selling what's likely to occur is if this wave C of a wave four completes, we should go on to see higher highs being made. So when I jump back into the chart now, you'll see it's ne never as clear on the chart, you know, because there's a live data chart, but we're looking at this again as this initial A, that's why I've written an A down here, this B, and then on this final leg down of a wave C. Is it going to definitely unfold that way? Look, we don't know. We can only go by the probability. So what we're doing here is looking at 
what's the high probability outcome? So if you're trading and buying Ethereum, you can kind of do your own risk management, but also if you're using it as an indicator of what's likely to occur next, because remember, you can do many things with Ethereum. Ethereum is just not, you know, speculation of buying low or selling high. You can stake it. You can get a mortgage out against your Ethereum. You can, you can do loads of things with your Ethereum. So this will just kind of give you an underlying, you know, worst case scenario, it may pull down to around $1,300, $1,500, $1,300. And it's a bit crazy, keeping in mind that it was around $4,500, how long ago? On May 10th. May 10th, it was around four and a half thousand dollars, and you know, reducing by 50 to 75 percent. That's just the nature of the game that we're in. So, last but not least, are you ready for Dogecoin? Are you ready for Dogecoin? Right, let's jump into Dogecoin. So, let's have a look with Dogecoin. So, this is the whole analysis that we did. We did a, a I think it was on it was end of June, early July, we projected that we should see a low in this region here. And we see that we made this low. So the big question is with Dogecoin, if I just get rid of this now, it is, is this the low or should we anticipate a lower low, right? That's the big question. As in, if I just zoom in here, if I just get this arrow out again, is this this final leg? Or are we likely to see a lower low being made? That's the big question, right? Because if this is the low, then we should see a correction, finish, and not be exceeded this low. But if this is not, then we'll probably get a lower low. So what's my opinion on this? Well, let's look at the momentum to help us. Momentum is bullish, and then it's turned bearish within this range. This pattern over here, now that we've got a bit more data, actually to me looks more like that we are gonna see a final leg down like this. So this actually looks more like a, a one, two, three, four, and this final wave five on the downside. This is a, it looks like a fifth wave diagonal where more, what, what's, what's we should be anticipating is on an impulsive wave that the, the waves don't overlap each other. This wave four doesn't go into the range of this wave one. However, there is a special condition called a fifth wave diagonal when the buying conditions are changing and it's, it is overlapping. It's called a fifth wave diagonal. So if we just jump back in, this looks like a fifth wave diagonal. We will probably see this low being tested, which is kind of near that low already. And we may see it exceeded and then we may see a finish of this. So let's just focus on this part of the market because it looks like it's nice uh, a, B, C, uh, D, and then an E final down coming on the way down. So let's just have a look at the four hour chart to give us a bit more information. So if we just look at this and go, right, this looks like a wave four. Uh, if we just do a quick count, boom, 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 I am looking for this, I'm looking for a one, two, three, four, and looks like a final leg down uh, for a wave five. If this is a fifth wave diagonal, we can just do our wave five projections. Still applies the same rules. So we want to measure the, let's just do this. Wave one to three. This, by the way, if you haven't seen this before, is Fibonacci price extensions or alternate price projections. This measures psychology and tells us where is a wave five likely to end. Um, I think I've done a few videos on that now. So there are some in, in the past that I've done, but what I want to do is just get the key metrics. The key metrics for end of wave five is 62% to 100% of a wave one to three. So this is that zone. So we'll probably get a double bottom and we'll see a nice wave five more than likely finish in this zone. If that's the case, um, if it doesn't, then the next zone is down here. So what's likely to occur is Dogecoin will finish around here or it will continue to this region. This one's probably more likely because it's lower than this one. Normally the wave five is lower. We might get a double bottom. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, but so I reckon definitely retest this, um, but possibly down here. Um, so if we just pull up the momentum, yeah, you can see probably the next bullish reversal on a four hour chart, we may see the low over the next couple of days. And if that's the case, what should we anticipate next? If it does end up being the low, then after any wave two correction, what comes next is a wave three. A wave three is boom, new highs to the upside. So there you have it, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, you're now up to speed with those three coins. What is it, Dogecoin now is, I was on CoinMarketCap this morning, 
top 10 cryptocurrency. Can you believe it? It's like number eight. I think it's also because everything else is performing so poorly. It's remained there. It's like dropped down to 20 cents, but everything else has dropped down also. So it's absolutely insane. If we just look at the top 10 very quickly on coin market cap, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, Binance, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, Dogecoin. Market cap now of Dogecoin is $25 billion right next to XRP. <laughs> absolutely insane. Not that far from Cardano. Binance is at 50 billion or just under. Tether's at 62 billion. And just so you know, when, when there's a lot of volume or market cap in Tether, often people hold Tether getting ready to buy. So they kind of, because it's a stable coin and it doesn't fluctuate. Ethereum 202, 222 billion and Bitcoin is 611 billion market cap. And it has been as high as a trillion dollars just back a few months ago. So there you have it. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin. If you like today's video, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. I'm going to finish today with a quote. I have a quote with this book. I mean, three quotes from this book. Bump. It is The Winning Investment Habits of Warren Buffett and George Soros. So let's read this one. I've got two for you now, today two. First one's from Albert Einstein. What is the most powerful force in the universe? Compound interest. And then Baron Rothschild says, I don't know what the seven wonders of the world are, but I do know the eighth compound interest. If you don't know about compound interest, it's a powerful thing. Uh, most people focus on the short term, but growing money upon money upon money, you get a compound effect and you get an exponential growth. It's good to look into. Right, that was today's video. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin. I will see you soon in a future video.